Okay, hello everybody. This is part two. My name is Helen Vermillion. Um, I teach at the Benson Senior Services Center and we're doing the um, small planters class. And this is the second part. And last week, what we did was we just made a simple pinch pot and I showed everybody how to put feet on it. And if you wanted to, you can turn it into an animal and put um, a head on it. I did mention that when you put something like a, like a tail, make sure that it's not just sticking out and that you attach it. If it's a long tail, you want to attach it. And on my, um, this animal, I've got these ears. So the tail and the ears are a thinner um, piece of uh, clay and it's going to dry faster. You can see it's already turning white. So I have to either cut little, little piece of plastic and um, cover the ears in the tail section so they don't dry faster. Okay, so right now I'm gonna have to give it a little hat or some kind of a scarf so that the ears don't get um, dried out too soon. And if this isn't gonna stay, I'll just weigh it down with a piece of clay right here. Okay. And then the tail area needs to be covered also. So you want to use a very soft plastic so you don't make marks on your clay. And I'm gonna cover the tail area too, okay? Um, what I did on this was the piece was a little bit thick, the bowl part. So I carved out some of the excess on the inside and I'll show you what that looks like. I think you can, oops, I think you can see, I can't, and I have a hole on the bottom for the plant. I also did some texture carving, as you can see. And once you do that, you're gonna get burrs and everything, but you wanna let, you want to let the clay dry a little bit and you take a very squeezed out sponge, I mean, squeezed out, very, very carefully. Sometimes you have to support it. This acts as a sandpaper, so you want to smooth out any burrs and sharp edges with this. Okay, so I did all that. I'm going to cover this guy up right now because um, the AC has kicked on and it's gonna dry out everything real fast. It's actually blowing right on us, right on me. So I am going to cover him up the best I can. And I'm just gonna use this, it's a bag. And we will carefully let it dry as slowly as we can. If you want to check on it every day to see how dry it's gotten. This morning, I oh, we were going to talk about uh, making a small planter pot with the slab technique. So this morning, I rolled out some slabs. I did let it set up a little bit. I did put a slab bottom on it, and I'll show you how to do that. But um, this one is just a simple slab. I am going to have to put very short feet on it. And because I can't flip it over because it has an uneven edge, I'm going to make some feet and then get it, attach it underneath. Okay, and the way I do that is I'll slide it to the edge of the table and then attach it. So first I have to lift this set up before I can attach any feet to it. So I'm gonna set this aside. Somewhere. Okay, okay now I'm gonna show you how I created that. Um, we're gonna make a small, planter. And these are little succulents you can buy at Trader Joe's for only $2.99. Um, it looks like this one's already growing a little baby on the side. So when this gets big, you can make a big, bigger planter. So I'm going to make something that's about a smaller size planter for that little pot. So this is a different colored clay. What I did was I rolled out a slab and I placed the slab on top of this texture plate I have. And then I pressed it in or I took the roller and you only make one pass, you just go one pass. 
Okay, if you go back and forth, you're gonna mess up your design. If you don't have a texture plate, you can find something um, in nature or around the house, even lace. You don't have to make a texture plate, but just to make your pot interesting, I made a texture plate. What I'm gonna do is I need some kind of a form to support my piece. So I will take a can that's open so I can reach in. And then I'm going to wrap another piece of paper around it. And this is just eight and a half by 11 copy paper. So I've got one roll, I mean, one piece of paper wrapped around and a little bit of um, scotch tape. Don't use a whole lot of the scotch tape. And then I'm going to wrap another piece of paper around it and put a little piece of tape on it. Okay, and you don't want it tight, okay, because you want those two pieces of paper to um, slip and slide from each other. All right, I'm going to straighten out the bottom of this slab. So I'll just take some kind of a straight edge and I will take my needle tool, see if I can find it, here it is, okay? And then I'll just straighten out this edge. Okay, by the way, this is Lysella clay. It's dug out from Georgia, South Georgia, Southwest Georgia, around the Macon area. So hopefully I don't crush my texture. And I'm going to straighten out a little bit of this edge. Okay, now I do have a, a piece of canvas I rolled this out on, and that helps uh, support your um, clay so it doesn't stay. You want your clay not to be stopping wet. So I'm bringing it up here and I'm going to slice it. You want a slight overlap if you can, not a butt, not a butt, it, uh, don't butt the two ends together. Now I'm going to have to score this and I'll just wet it with the sponge a little bit and take my scoring tool and score it pretty good. If you have slip, you can slip your um, joint, but I don't have slip, so I'll just kind of do this. I'm probably going to lose some of my texture at that joint. Let's see what it looks like. So what I can do is if I wanted to, I can carve some of the texture to continue it. So that's pretty good. And carefully make it seal it really good. Um, I noticed that my top is uneven, but it has this guy, this thing going around, but my texture doesn't continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. If I had a turntable right here, I can just spin the turntable, but I don't. So I'm just going to guess about where I'm gonna cut it. Okay. All right, and then I can take this off. All right, so this might not be straight up and down, but um, once this guy is, is gonna stand up on its own, I'm gonna slide the can out. And then I'm gonna take the paper, carefully take the paper out. All right. Now, I do have to um, secure that joint right there. So what I'll do is I'll take, I'll make a slimy worm out of my clay. And I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take uh, this guy. You can use a popsicle stick. I'm going to kind of like push the joint really good and you can't probably see this. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, probably not. Okay, so anyway, I, I squish the joint a little bit as best as I can. And then I'm going to take a worm and fill in that joint. Reinforce it. It's hard to see right now. And if you can't get your hand in there, just use some kind of a tool. 
uh, a popsicle stick really comes in handy here. Let's see, I don't think I have mine right here. So I will use this to press that, support, support the outside and try to smooth it out as best as I can. Next week, we're going to combine the slab with the pinch pot, and you're going to make that kind of a planter. It could be a, it could be an animal, it could be a person, or it could just be uh, something abstract. Doesn't have to be anything. Okay, so I think I've got that pretty good. My clay is very wet, so uh, um, it's a little bit hard to work with it without smushing it. Okay, if I wanted to, I can take um, a lid tool and smooth out the inside as much as possible. I can always smooth that out later too. All right, so now I've got this and my seam is kind of right there and it is kind of messed up, but I can touch it up later. All right. So I can either have a planter that's cylindrical and the bottom will be here, or I can give it a false bottom. I can bring a slab and just attach it here, okay? So let's see. Um, it's a little bit tall. I could cut it down. Yeah, let, let's cut it down because it's, Visually, maybe a shorter one would be nicer. So I'm going to decide whether I'm going to cut the bottom or the top. And I think I'm going to cut the top. And I'm, this time I'm going to put it on the thing here. Um, this is something from the kitchen. Okay. And I'm going to mark where, I, now don't forget your clay is gonna shrink about 10%. So you kind of have to guess about where it's going to end up. And this, this guy's gonna be a small planter. Um, sometimes I'll have succulents that make babies and I'll transfer the babies into these small pieces until they get bigger. Okay, so that's just my, I just cut it down to that much. And smooth out the joint, smooth out the lip a little bit. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be the top of my pot. All right, now it needs a bottom. So I'm going to have to roll out a slab for the bottom. And uh, because it's such a small piece, I don't really need to use the two rods that's going to give it an even thickness, but um, larger pieces, I do use that. So I want it a little bit thinner than the diameter of that rod. So I'm just gonna carefully thin it out. You also want to work on a tile or some kind of board and you need to put something between the pot and the board. So I am going to use a tile. It's just a clay piece. And I'm actually going to put a half, half little torn piece of paper towel so that the clay doesn't stick to the tile. Oops, maybe this is better, okay? All right, so that's going to be the bottom. And right now it's a lot wetter than the um, cylinder part, but that's okay. Um, at this point, you can make this 
into a triangular shape or a square or a third, you know, cylinder, whatever you want to do. I think I'm gonna go for a triangular shape. See if I can do that. And you're looking at the bottom of your piece. Okay, so that's kind of a triangular shape. And I'm going to put it on here. Um, it's still kind of leaning a little bit. Is it? Let me see. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of um, cut about less than a fourth of an inch away. So my tile kind of turns on its own because it's, it's kind of wonky to begin with. All right, now take it off. Oops, not coming off. Okay, you take it off and set it aside. Okay, don't turn it because then you'll forget which way it went. And you want to score it. This joint is not as critical because um, the weight of this clay is sitting on top of this slab. So, oops, now I lost my orientation here. I think it was this way. Oh, I can't remember. Okay, in fact, I didn't even score it properly. All right, so I kind of wiggle a little bit to see if I can get good adhesion. Now, I'm going to have a problem here. Um, normally, I would um, really squish down this clay down and then pull this up. But because of this design, I am just gonna have to be as careful as possible and kind of coax this bottom piece. And then some of it's gonna to be too much. So I'm just gonna take some of it out. So this part, I have to be a little bit more careful. I'm just gonna push it kind of under and upward into the bottom here. Get rid of some of the excess. So because I already have this texture on here, it's gonna take a lot of work to clean it up later and fine tune it. The other option is you can always carve your texture. Um, it is, it's kind of difficult to add the texture after you formed your piece because it's probably a little bit stiffer and drier. You could use stamps, okay? You could carve it. You could add um, designs to it. So many possibilities. I'm just gonna get rid of that excess and kind of shove that as much as I can into the bottom of this piece. Okay. And I'm gonna to try to press it. So way on the bottom, um, I can either leave a untextured about a fourth of an inch edge, or when this gets a little bit more dry, I can carve the design back into it. Okay, so right now it's too wet. I'm going to leave it like this. All right, so we have that so far. Now, if you wanted to put a false bottom, what you need to do is, let's say this was bigger. Well, let's see. Let's say it was a little bit bigger and taller. Well, that doesn't make sense. Hold on. All right, maybe this will help. All right. No, that's still too tall. All right, let's pretend this is real tall. And you're going to put a false bottom. When you set that little piece of clay in as carefully as you can, and you score it and everything, it's going to still, um, gravity's going to pull it down. So you can either bunch up some paper towel 
and shove it under here so it has a stopping place. Or if you had a really tall piece, you can put like a jar or something so the bottom sits on top, but you still need to um, buffer it with a paper towel or something, okay? And then let it set up and then you can remove that. All right, now I need to decide on feet. And in this part's drying out, so I'm going to kind of, you don't want to re-wet it like stopping wet. Clay doesn't like that too much. Just dampen it a little bit. Okay. Now, um, I think I'm gonna let it bulge out a little bit if I can. Check the shape. Okay. So right now it's like a triangular pot. Now I'm gonna need feet. I can either, because this is level, I can actually flip it over and attach feet. All right. So at this point I can clean this up. But this is gonna be a little teeny tiny pot. It's gonna end up really cute. Um, this clay is gonna fire at the low temperature. It's gonna look like those terracotta pots. At a higher temperature, it's going to be like a dark, dark red, like iron rust. Okay, so I wanna give it a little foot. I'm just gonna give it three little round feet because it's such a small little pot. Let's see. And then I'm just going to give it three feet. Okay, because it, it's, it, well, it's a triangle anyway, so I have to do three feet. Okay, if you want your balls to be even, your feet to be even, um, you roll out like a cylinder and then you cut it in even sections. So I'm just going to have to eyeball mine. Mine aren't even because I didn't do that. Okay, I've got round balls, All right? I do need to score, scratch it pretty deep. But once again, the weight of this is gonna sit down. So um, chances of the balls falling off are, well, we do need to, because they're, they're kind of like appendages. So they need to be attached pretty good. So um, you do need to score this pretty deep. And I wet it and then I'm kind of making it muddy here. I'm going to add a little bit of water. So instead of using slip, I'm just going to wiggle this around until I can feel it grabbing because because what it the water is making it muddy there and, and it's going to create a slurry. Now I am kind of pinching this so it becomes like a triangular foot, like a cone almost. Okay, normally um, I would recommend you put like a coil here for reinforcement and then smooth it out so it has a gradual transition. But because this is such a small pot, you're not gonna see the feet very well probably. Um, I don't think we need that for this one. Okay. All right, so I wet that, I wet this. And once again, I go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it has suction. Okay, you want to get it as even in height as possible, all the feet, but sometimes that doesn't work out that easily. So um, when this is a little bit, when it becomes pretty dry, I'm going to flip it over and rub it on my canvas board with lots of water to even out the feet. Right now, I can't do that. It's too wet. My feet will just come right off. Okay, wet this, wet that part. Make mud again. And if it got messy, you can clean it up, okay? All right. I do need a hole in the middle for the um, water to leave. So I will take something here. I'll just use this. And I'll make a small hole. 
so she can see this better. Now the clay is very, very wet because remember the bottom slab didn't get a chance to set up. All right, at this point, if you turn it over, your feet might get squished from the weight of the clay. So what you might want to do is take uh, enough clay to make a round disc about the size of that. And you kind of guess the height. Okay, so that's too high. And because you don't want this guy to fuse onto that guy, the bottom of your pot, you're going to put a, you're going to create a barrier. So I'm just going to take another piece of paper towel, put it on here. Okay. So you got the paper towel there. That guy is going to take, take the weight, and you, so your feet shouldn't get squished. All right. All right. And then you let this uh, set up. Now, I did not um, reinforce where the pot comes in, but if you wanted to, especially on a larger piece, you need to, you just kind of squish down that joint, the seam, and then you have to add the little teeny tiny worm for reinforcement. And you'll have to use a tool to smooth it out because it's just impossible to get your hand in. So I'll just make a little tiny one. Because it's a planter, maybe it's not as critical to do that, but um, sometimes, you know, you're, because we had, we have to be careful of the texture on the outside, we didn't really give it a strong um, joint right there. So you're just gonna have to somehow add this. And it's very difficult because you can't get your hand in there. So you just use some kind of a tool um, I like to use the end of a pencil, and especially if your pencil had eraser still. It really helps, and just kind of gently push it. Now, I probably should have done this process before I put the feet on, because now I'm putting pressure on the pot. So it's just something I forgot to do, but um, it's not the end of the world. You can, if you're real careful, you can get, you can do it. When I do this, it might bulge out the bottom, okay? So right now I can't see a darn thing because this clay is dark, but I'll try to smooth it out as best as I can. And if I want it to be perfect, what I can do is um, you can get a chopstick or even a pencil and you can cut up a little piece of sponge and rubber band it and make sure it's not sopping wet and then you can smooth it out with that. Okay, so I still have the seam there. Um, let me move this here. So this is what it looks like so far, okay? And it just needs to be cleaned up a lot. But right now it's too wet for me to clean up. And I can either leave this part on the bottom blank like that, or I can bring down the carbon, kind of fudge it. Now, as far as glazing, um, I hadn't planned to, I wasn't going to glaze this guy because I was going to take it to a mid fire temperature cone stick. And it's not going to be completely vit vitreous, but it's, it's a bit good. Um, water is going to seep out of the sides. So what I'm going to do is glaze just inside, but this Lizella glaze, um, I don't have a compatible glaze that makes it completely waterproof right now. So I am going to be aware that some of the water is still going to seep out, but it is a planter, so um, it doesn't bother me. The only thing is you might get salts coming out from the, the salts from the soil, and that might discolor, discolor the outside of your pot. So I'm going to try to um, add some glaze on the, in the, on the inside, and I'm going to stop the glaze about an inch from the top, okay, so that when you add the dirt, you won't see the glaze. It's just a totally functional piece. So that is your simple, oops, um, slab form pot. And next week we will do the one where we'll do the slab 
and then we'll add the pinch butt on the top. Um, it's, it's gonna be slightly bigger than, well, it could be this, but it, it's gonna be taller. You can add a pinch butt to here. Um, I highly recommend you practice with carving or adding designs or texture to your piece. Okay, so that's the lesson for today and we will continue on next week. Okay, so that's your pot and it's going to get the little, it's going to uh, shrink about 10%. So kind of going to look like this and it's going to make that plant happy. Okay. So we'll see you next week. So until then, get some clay and we'll be having a good time uh, creating a, another piece, all right? Thank you, everybody.